So what's the difference between a class action and a representative action under California's Private Attorney General's Act? So California employers need to understand the difference between a class action and a representative action brought by an employee under California's Private Attorney General's Act of 2004. So I want to put together this quick video going over some of the differences. It gets very nuanced, so this is just a quick uh, high-level overview, but I think it will give employers a good understanding of what they're facing uh, between the difference of a class action and a PAGA action. So first, a class action is brought on behalf of putative class members, other members. So the named plaintiff brings the action on behalf of these other unnamed employees that are similar, similarly situated as the uh, named plaintiff. On a PAGA action, the employee is actually substituting themselves into the shoes of the state, and they're bringing the PAGA action on behalf of the state. So it's a key difference that we'll, uh, I'll discuss here as we talk about some of the other differences. The uh, employees can recover statutory damages and all damages. Um, under a PAGA claim, the employee is limited to civil penalties, can only recover penalties that the state could have recovered if the state brought a claim against the employer um, in an enforcement action through the state. Now the key thing, they call it PAGA, it's also known as the bounty hunter law because the um, employee who brings the, ca the case, the PAGA claim, has to share 75% of the penalties recovered, has to be shared back to the state, and then the employees get to keep 25% of the recovery. Uh, so that's a key difference between the class action and PAGA claim. Now also with class actions, the plaintiffs have to go through a class certification process. That's usually the biggest hurdle, the first hurdle that the plaintiffs have to cross in a class action. In a PAGA claim, there is no class certification process. It's a representative claim, and it's a different type of claim than class action, and employers don't have the same kind of defenses to class certification. Um, in a class action as they do, they would have in a PAGA claim. So the PAGA claim is a little easier for the plaintiffs to bring and to allege up front. Class action, um, when a pl plaintiff brings a class action, there's no notice requirement. The plaintiff does not have to provide advance notice to the state or the government or the employer for that, that matter. They can just file the class action, the putative class action. For a PAGA claim, though, the plaintiff actually has very stringent notice require, requirements. They have to notify the state through the LWDA. It's an online notification the employee has to provide um, to the state. And that notice also has to be provided to the employer. So it's really important for employers to pay attention to those PAGA notices before the PAGA claim is actually filed. There are certain provisions, labor code provisions, that can be cured by the employer to stop the damages if there's any violations. So it's really important for employers to look at that notice and seek legal, legal counsel right up front once they receive those PAGA notices. Now the other key difference between a class action and a PAGA action is the statute of limitations. Uh, under a class action claim in the state of California, if there's uh, an allegation of a business and profession code section 17200 violation, the statute of limitations can reach back four years. PAGA claims can only go back one year because they're only seeking um, these penalties, uh, civil penalties. So that's a key difference, a lot shorter statute of limitations for PAGA claims. Now also the other key thing with a class action, class action claims can be waived by employees through arbitration agreements. Um, it's a little unsettled under California law if PAGA claims can be waived by employees through these arbitration agreements. Uh, California courts, um, a lot of them have said no, employees can't waive them, but there are a few courts out there that said uh, that they can be waived, and there's an argument out there that the uh, California law might be preempted on the federal level on this waiver issue. So that's a quick overview of the difference between a class action and a PAGA representative action under California law. If you have any questions, please let me know. And if you like these videos, please subscribe and uh, hit the like button. Thanks.